This video <clears throat> is about <coughs> interesting events in Latin America during during um, the Cold War. And Latin America really played a major role in during the Cold War just basically because it's so close to the United States it would be geopolitically would be a very interesting place to have bases, Russian bases and Marxist bases and turn countries from liberal economies and capital, capitalistic economies into Marxism. And a country like Cuba turning into Marxism just represented a major loss for the United States because it's so close to the United States and so strategically advantageous for the Russians, for example. So when um, it's, if, if you look at Latin America, Latin America just has a history of having Spanish domination until a series of independent movements in, that started in the 1800s. Um, I think really the first country to become independent was really a French colony, and right now is the poorest, which is kind of um, funny because you kind of expect the, country, the first country that got independent was like would have the high the highest chances of being successful. And right now, there's like Haiti is probably the poorest country in Latin America, followed by Nicaragua and Bolivia, using World Bank indicators. So. Um, where was I going with this? So when world economies, when world economies, um, when when a lot when a lot when the Russian started exercising influence in La in Latin America. Very, there, there was this whole era where there was a lot of turmoil and everybody was trying to decide which side they were taking. And a great example of this is Cuba. So basically Cuba was, it, this is, re, mo, most of the examples in America follow a case like Cuba. Cuba was run by a oppressive dictatorial um, regime, which was Batista. And this was supported by the states, usually they're supported by the states mildly. And then, Che Guevara and Fidel Castro and Camilo Cienfuegos basically organized a, a, a guerrilla type invasion in a boat called the Granma from Mexico. They, they basically sailed all the way to the Cuban mountains of Sierra Madre. And then they organized a guerrilla in a country that was already very unhappy with the government. So everybody kind of sided the revolutionaries and it was really not, once they landed, it was not necessarily that difficult. And it had taken over the Sierra Madre to take over the island and basically kick out Batista from, from um, La Habana. So the invasion was relatively successful in a large part because they had Russian support, especially in the later years, to, to, to develop their economies. And they had a lot of the people support. So these two factors just created the the a, a big a um a good solid base for a a communist regime to take over the island of Cuba. It is it is um it is interesting that Cuba later on had very high economic um social indicators, especially literacy. Life, literacy was very high, life expectancy was very high. This is just the, uh, a socialized system just creates, in, a successful socialized system, and they were successful in the way it just creates this type of environment. Yet, many people were unhappy, many people wanted to leave. And for example, <laughs> the people that were supported by Batista, and the Batistas fled for Cuba, fled for the states and they're called gusanos by the um, Marxist Cubans which is basically worms 
and they try to reorganize uh, in Bayesian, which is the Bay of Pigs. So the, here you can see how there's the dictatorial regime supported by one of the world powers, which is the United States. There's the Marxist regime supported by the, eventually by the Russians. And there's the people who end up supporting the populist Marxist regime, which is kind of like what happened in a lot of other countries. I, like Bolivia had something similar, Argentina, had infl Chile and Argentina had hard Marxist groups, yet there was a lot of unfair repression, especially you, you hear the names Agenda and Pinochet that um, killed a lot of people in order to create, to kick away communism. But there were a lot of battles going back and forth and CIA going in, training people that were against the communism in a lot of countries advocating that the states just was imperialistic and just wanted to um, take advantage of the situation that hap was happening in, in, in Latin America.